This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering media management, file sizes, and video formats. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I discuss the impact of video frame size, video frame rate, and codecs on storage and video editing. Why is storage bandwidth important? Storage bandwidth is the speed of data transfer between your storage and your computer and back. Read speed is the speed from storage to computer. Write speed is the speed from computer to storage. Media bandwidth is the data transfer speed a media file requires in order to play smoothly. In general, assume that your NLE needs twice the bandwidth of a single media file for normal editing. Multicam editing uses a different formula. Take the number of simultaneous streams, the number of cameras you're editing, and add one to it. That's the media bandwidth. Storage bandwidth is the speed that your device is capable of, and this varies depending upon the device. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. In order to know what we're doing to measure storage bandwidth, we can use two applications, HAA System Test Lite, or Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. I use both. I like both. They're both excellent. They're both free. They're both available in the Mac App Store. That measures the maximum speed that your storage is capable of. To measure actual media bandwidth, I use from the Utilities folder inside my Mac, I use a program called Activity Monitor, and I can measure network speed and I can measure locally attached storage speed. And if you need specs on media bandwidth, in other words, I'm planning to do a 4K project at 60 frames a second, what kind of bandwidth do I need? Apple has an outstanding white paper called the Apple ProRes White Paper. Do a Google search for it. And the tables at the end, which I've used religiously for years, are really outstanding at helping figure out how much bandwidth you need. I have not found similar tables to the level of detail that Apple provides. But DNX HD and all the other formats, GoPro Cineform, will fall in similar lines, even though they may not have similar numbers. Which gets to the question of how much bandwidth do I need? Well, bandwidth by device will vary. One gigabit Ethernet can go up to 120 megabytes a second. A single spinning hard drive is around 150 megabytes a second. A standard SSD is about 400 megabytes a second. An internal Fusion SSD is, varies from 700 to 2,000 megabytes a second. An NVMe SSD is 2,500 megabytes a second. A four-drive RAID that uses SSDs instead of spinning media is about 1,200 megabytes a second. And the speeds will vary depending upon device, and that's assuming devices are connected via Thunderbolt 2 or 3. If we take a look at bandwidth by frame size, this is the number of megabytes per second of ProRes 4 to 2 at 30 frames a second. Standard definition is trivial. It's 13 megabytes a second or less. It's tiny. 1287, 20 HD is also not a big deal. We start to see a little bit of use around, oh, I don't know, 30 or 40 megabytes a second for 1080 HD. 4K is pushing 70, 80. And look at 8K. We all know 8K is coming. We're not ready for it, but we know it's coming. It's 300 megabytes per second for an 8K image. Look at how that suddenly turns that chart into a hockey stick. If we look at it by the number of gigabytes to store one hour of ProRes at 30 frames a second, imagine you're an editor who's been editing HD all their life, and a client comes to you say, I want to do a, a 4K project, and I want to shoot it raw, and, and I plan to have... 60 frames a second to preserve the greatest image quality. Well, look at what suddenly happened to you. Your storage requirements are through the roof. Your bandwidth requirements are through the roof. Your system may or may not be ready to handle it. That's why this is so important. Or look at this. As frame rate increases, look what happens to the megabytes per second from roughly 15 for 24 or 25 frames a second to close to 35 megabytes per second simply for the difference in frame rate. Similar comparison for gigabytes to store an hour of ProRes 4 to 2 at a 1080 frame size. As frame rates increase, file sizes increase. And as bit depth increases, look at what this 
this chart says. 8-bit, 10-bit, 12, 14, 16-bit. Look at how our file size is doubling as the bit depth increases. This is not to say don't do larger frame sizes or don't do faster frame rates or don't do more bit depth. What it is to say is that switching from one to the other is not as trivial as you may think and your storage may not be able to keep up because the demands you're putting on it are so much bigger. To give you some numbers, AVC HD to store an hour at 24 frames, about 10 gig. ProRes 422, 53 gig. Red, 150 gig. Area Alexa, 134. Look at how the file sizes increase as the frame size increases, fourth column, or up to 6K. I haven't even updated this for 8K yet. We're talking 1.1 terabytes for ProRes 4x4 to store an hour compared to a a tenth of that when we're at 1080p 24. Holy smokes, my poor little hard disks are going to get tuckered out. <laughs> this has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 291. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.